Hi, welcome to How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Based on my book of the same name, this podcast is here to help you have the wedding of your dreams and not the wedding that other people are putting pressure on you to have. I'm Ross, I'm a wedding photographer, passionate about embracing diversity and equality in the wedding industry. And each week I'm going to be talking to different experts to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. So regardless of who you're marrying, where you're marrying and how old you're going to be when you get married, sit back, relax and find out how to have a wedding as individual as you are. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Really excited today because we are joined by the wonderful Jenny Gaugi, an absolutely awesome hairstylist, and we're talking not just about hair and tips for having a cracking wedding day do, but also about confidence and how what you wear and your style can impact how you feel on your big day. So welcome Jenny, thanks for joining me today. Thank you Ross, what an intro, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I try, I try. Um, My head won't get out the door, don't um, <laughs> So tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, what you're passionate about in your job. Um, hi, my name is Jenny Galgi and I own Bridal Hair by Jenny. Um, I'm based in Essex, but I cover um, sort of Essex and the surrounding borders. Um, and I offer beautifully bespoke heartfelt hairstyling. Lovely, I like <laughs> with, that. With a focus on soft and bohemian inspired styles. Um, I've been in the hair industry since I left school, at the, um, really actually since 14. Um, wow, so about I, seven years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seven years, that's it. Um, I started uh, through like a, a work experience at school and, and realised that I really enjoyed hairdressing and had a passion for it and actually I was pretty good at it. <laughs> Very good um, at it, Not pretty good at it, Very good at it. And I've actually had my own uh, bridal hair company for over a decade now. Wow, yeah. fantastic um, stuff. I'm also a mum to two crazies. I have a daughter, <laughs> Jess, who is 14, nearly 15, but she's going on 21. <laughs> and my youngest, Ben, who is five, and he thinks he's, he's a teenager. Oh dear. <laughs> so work and home life keep you very, very busy. So Thank today's like a, a little respite for you, really. It is, it's a respite and a chat and a coffee and biscuits that you're offering Yeah, biscuits, well. we have it all here, don't worry. We <laughs> entice you with food just to get you to come. So, uh, we've welcomed Jenny. Here's um, a little bit of a summary or um, a heads up on what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you some top tips for choosing a hairstyle and a hairstylist for your big day. We're going to provide advice on keeping your hair looking healthy in the build up to the wedding and beyond. And we're going to talk about how your hairstyle can have an impact on your confidence and how you feel about yourself. Something that's really important on your wedding day is to feel good about who you are and how you look. So uh, Jen is a bit of an expert on making people feel fantastic. So we'll delve into that in a little while. So a few industry specific questions for Jenny. Are you ready? (laughs) (laughs) In the hot seat. (laughs) (laughs) So I was going to ask you, first of all, why did you choose to specialise in bridal hair as opposed to working in a salon? Well, actually, Ross, I've actually been Um, I've worked in all aspects of of hairdressing, as I sort of touched on, since I was 14. Okay. Um, Everything from working in a salon, um, worked, managed salons. Um, I then went to work for a hair product company and I used to train within the salon and educate. Uh, And then I've done seminars and events for um, clothes show, um, live and uh, the NEC exhibition. Um, And I've even actually travelled with them to several different countries and done seminars. Um, Funny enough, Iceland, which when I actually told people, they thought I was talking about Iceland the shop. (laughs) Not quite as glamorous. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The USA, uh, I didn't actually um, speak at that seminar, but I was sort of invited as as sort of one of their top people. um, And we got spot rotten and it was a fantastic opportunity. 
um, Malta where at the time um, the hair product company actually uh, so many of the, the general people in Malta uh, used the product that we were actually on Maltese television. Wow, <laughs> to <laughs> claim to fame there. <laughs> yes, and then Jersey. Jersey I was sort of sent to and, and told to, to go and sort of train um, the, the larger group hair salons, which was quite funny at the time because there was no sat nav. So I was just kind of given a car and a map. Oh my goodness, that's my worst nightmare. A phone. And if I didn't have a phone, there'd be a phone box and just get horribly lost and turn up <laughs> hours late. So. so you've had all sorts of adventures, um, but you still turn up to a wedding just as excited and enthusiastic to do your job. Yeah, I mean... I started my only own sort of bridal business um, just over a decade ago and I'd gone into sales just before that. Okay. I got a bit disillusioned with my hair product company. They'd put me in a more salesy environment and, and I wasn't a salesperson. I've always been a creative hairdresser so I got a bit frustrated and was like, right, I'll just go into sales. Um, when I um, worked in sales, I really, really enjoyed it. I was actually in advertising. Um, okay. But when I had my daughter and then went back, it was a really, really hard job to do. And um, it's funny enough, I think fate always takes a, a, a place it in does. this. It does, yeah. And one of the customers that I was actually sorting out their advert, we were talking, and I always used to sit there and have a proper natter with everybody. Um, and he was getting married, and his wife-to-be was looking for a hairstylist. Hairdressers don't like doing wedding hair as a rule, or haven't got the time for it in the salon. And this is where it started from that one wedding. Then wow. I was getting um, people messaging me. Uh, I then decided to do my first wedding fair, um, which was actually a, a local venue in Essex. I don't know if I can mention them. <laughs> um, but uh, from there, it, it just grew. The business kind of happened organically. Um, and then, then it's kind of evolved. So for a few years, it was more of what I'd call a hobby business okay yeah uh, and then I sort of slowly but surely kind of decided to take the whole thing more seriously really kind of embraced the, the business and since then I haven't looked back <laughs> non-stop literally but that, that's good that you're in demand and it says a lot that you know about your skills and your customer service and that you know brides are loving what you do which is fantastic so testament to, <laughs> to your wonderful work did so I you, answer your question you did answer Russell, my question did I go off on I'm just tangent? trying not to you know give you too much of an ego boost but <laughs> you know we do like to promote our guests here so Thank that's you. absolutely fine <laughs> so when you see a bride or they a consultation um, or their first inquiry do they come with any common concerns or requests in terms of hairstyles do they know you for a certain style I, th I think, especially over the last few years, um, that I, I, before I was sort of everyone's hairdresser and just wanted okay. to please every bride that walked in the door, I think I have got more comfortable with um, doing the styles I really ha have a passion for. And I've actually created my own styles. So one thing I don't do, I don't say, would you like this style and show them a picture? I believe in actually having a bespoke style for each and every bride. Right. I don't, even if there's bits and pieces of all these different pictures put together, yeah. I don't believe in identical styling. I don't like that. No. I don't want my bride to have a style exactly the same as somebody else has got. I'll always add something different so it doesn't look you yeah, know, mediocre, the, the sort of the sort of same. Um, I think the other thing is obviously when you sort of asking a frequently asked question, one thing would be when they look at a hairstyle in a picture, they're sort of like, oh, that looks very, very soft, you know, how does it last? And the answer to that is it's an illusion. The style is extremely secure and some of my, you know, brides have done crazy stuff like swing from... Um, I don't know, ropes or jumping on trampoline, you know, like bouncing wow, muscles. Yeah. Um, and their hairstyle stays. And that's what I have to do. Um, that's where it's different to sort of a general salon. And I say generally, there are people out there that can, can do that sort of work. Yeah. Um, but generally, it's more of an illusion. The style is secure and then it's kind of pulled and teased and played with until you have that beautiful sort of bohemian undone look. So that is a question that I get asked for the most. Okay, and um, we were chatting before and you said that there's certain styles that you don't do or that you're sort of, 
you're not so passionate about. Yes. So, and I've mentioned in the book when looking for suppliers, um, yes, suppliers, again, have to tailor things to meet their clients' needs and you need to find someone who's going to listen to what you want, but you also want someone that's got a consistency to their portfolio and sort of niches or specialises in a certain look. Yes. So, as you said, you've touched on it a little bit, your, your look is quite natural and... For me, I am um, what I would call a natural hairstylist and that basically comes under the umbrella of everything from an editorial look to a bohemian to a rustic um, and also like a very sort of understated elegance. Hasn't got to look like totally kind of wild crazy look. It's just, I like hair to look like it hasn't been covered in hairspray, overly back combed. Uh, within an inch of its life so I like hair to look natural um, and to look beautiful so kind of my brides now find me um, because they want to feel comfortable they want to still look like them but the very best version yeah excellent and that's exactly what I spoke about with Leanne on a previous podcast the makeup artist about being the best version of your yourself and that makes you feel more confident which we're going to talk about um, shortly Um, but before then I have a bit of a question for you because in my book I use an an analogy of going to the hairdressers um, and saying what you want as a style and then realising part of the way through uh, that you haven't been listened to and you don't get the haircut you want and then you walk out feeling like disappointed that you didn't sort of stop them halfway through or you feel like your hair's wearing you and, and you have a lot of regrets that you didn't feel listened to and I use that as an analogy for finding wedding suppliers or photographers or people that promise you all sorts or or seem to be listening to you and then when the big day arrives they haven't actually and they've kind of imparted their own style or values on your big day which is not what you wanted Mm. do you think that's an unfair generalization of how hairdressers work i think um i would definitely say in answer to your your previous question as well which i realized i didn't answer properly (laughs) um When you're looking for a hairstylist um, for your big day, firstly, I would say, um, if I I was looking for someone myself, I would firstly be looking for recommendation. I think if you know someone has done a really good job with one of your friends or something like that, or a wedding you've been to, you've liked the hair look, um, and the bride has been happy with that hair, then they are definitely someone to be looking at. Yeah. Um, Secondly, if you've been a bridesmaid and you have liked the hairstylist, so many of my weddings have been bridesmaids before they're brides. Okay, um, yes. Quite frequently um, they've met me and just said, you know, you listen to what I say. It might be something silly like, oh, I really hate my ears, hide my ears. And rather than just doing a style, I will say, right, okay, we're going to create this look. We're going to take the hair much softer around the front so actually you won't see your ears. And they are so pleased to actually be listened to that they then become a yeah. future bride of mine. Um, and then I'd say um, to also look at social media. Um, I'm terrible with Pinterest at the moment and I, I need to, to get up on it. But obviously Pinterest, um, look at pictures on Pinterest, see if there's local hairdressers that are actually pinning, showing the sort of styles that, that you, you like you like, and that go with your wedding. Um, and things, obviously, I post a lot of stuff on Instagram and Facebook um, and I get a lot of work from both of those now. Okay. I, I actually, funny enough, haven't had a website for over a year now, wow. um, but still been fully booked this year. So for me, Instagram uh, has been like um, a, a little shop front, so to speak. Yeah. And I obviously, all the styles that I create, um, as long as I've managed to get a great picture of it, which doesn't <laughs> always happen, um, I will post them on there so that my brides can see the sort of work that I love doing. And I think then those brides come up to you and instead of showing you a picture of somebody else's hair, they're sending you a picture of your work saying... That's really important because we've touched on this before about using social media as a starting point but not getting sucked into unrealistic expectations or basing it on celebrity culture or having something that doesn't really suit with you. Again, with Leanne, with the makeup, we we touched on that. But that's a nice point that... Mm if a, a supplier has got a lot of their own work on Instagram, then you can be inspired by that specific supplier and know that that's what they can deliver. So I think that's a really important point 
to make. I'm, I, I think sometimes when I've spoken about social media, it comes across that I'm anti-social media and I'm not. I post a lot on social media, yeah. but I think some people go down that route of, I want to look like that. And, and again, it's an unrealistic look or it might be a look, like you say, that doesn't hold throughout the day. Mm. So yeah, to, to make a point of looking at low court suppliers doing the kind of style that you want, that's a, that's a good point. I think um, what I was trying, to, when, when I look at pictures, because occasionally people will give me a picture and it's a, a Russian bride look or whatever, or they've got tons of hair extensions in or super thick hair and the bride's coming to me saying, I want this. And it's basically a particular, like you said, without the Instagram shots, um, it's a particular angle, it's all illusion, and actually the hair probably looked very flat on the other side in order to, yes. to compensate for the, the fullness on one side. So what I try to do, I try to use no filter if I can, so that um, it's really showing the genuine style, especially if I've got good light and stuff. And I try and show it from different angles. And actually what I've been doing recently, which has been going down very well, is actually videoing. So I think it's important. So the bride who is looking at my work, because I know people are basically looking at my Instagram <laughs> going, is she the one for me? Is that person going to be right for me? Um, and I think if you video a style, you're showing it from every angle. There's nothing there. There's no illusion there. You can't fake you a video. You can't hide, no. Um, and it's Fantastic. been going down really well. Um, and obviously videos get a good reception anyway. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's important to see what every angle looks like. And, and you can kind of look at your own face and think, is that style going to suit me? And obviously... When people come to me, Ross, I will look at the hair, I'll look at their face, I'll look at the style of the dress, I'll look at the style of the wedding. And we will put something together that is right for all of those things. It's got to suit the bride. There's yes. no good having a bohemian uh, Rapunzel-esque look if it's not going to suit you or you're not going to feel comfortable. No. So it's got to be something that you feel very confident wearing well um, and at the same time, it suits you. That's yeah. really key. Yeah. So you're obviously not one of those hairdressers that just, go with what you like and not care about clients do you come across is there a lot of that in your industry is that a bit unfair I think in general there's there's wedding suppliers you know of all genres that can be forceful and not listen um but do you think you stand out as a hairstylist because you you do take the time to listen or do you think most most hairstylists do actually have that relationship and rapport with their clients I think that Depends on, like you say, obviously within a salon environment, I do agree to a, there is a degree of that. It may be though that that stylist is particularly very good at one particular look. So right. they want their client to go out with that one, one particular look. I actually worked with a very famous salon um, when I worked for KMS and every client would go out with, I can't say them, but they're still <laughs> around. And every particular client would go out with a particular rock chick look of whatever okay. had been fashionable that week. That's interesting actually because... Oh, I've had loads of bad haircuts. And I'm not having a great hair day today. That's why podcasts are so good because I don't have to worry. But um, the one I felt least listened to was a big name salon, actually, as opposed to a small... I've got a fantastic hairdresser now. Katie, if you're listening, you're great. But um, because so she listens slack. and she listens to a point where now I can say do what you like because I trust her because I've known her for so long. Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, the big name salon it was just, this is what we think is in, or this is what is good, this is what we're doing. They didn't say that, but that's obviously what they did. What I decided to do, um, a couple of years ago, I moved into a, a new house. It's actually three years ago in, in a couple of days. Um, and I decided to create my own um, studio. And the idea of it being a studio, it has no basins. So I cannot possibly do any normal hairdressing. I don't do any normal hairdressing anymore. I just do styling, wedding, wedding yeah. hair. Um, so I've got beautiful veils and hair jewellery and they can come in for a glass of bubbly. They can sit there and I allow a long time for a trial. And that gives us a chance. Obviously, we're chatting on the phone. We're chatting by emails and, you know, everything else. But I think... 
you really need to talk to someone and to face to face and then we break down everything that we like so I will sort of be saying what did you like about these particular pictures because it might just be a fringe (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah rather than trying to give a similar look it might just be a fringe it might be the back or whatever and really break down what they are looking for what they're dressed and help them know because I find often with photographs they don't know why they like a certain photo um but yeah when you discuss it you realize okay you're tending more towards you know full length photos or photos where you're laughing and not looking at the camera or yeah so it's helping people i've got to be know honest themselves. the the drink helps <laughs> so <laughs> bit of bubbly you know when i you know i normally offer a little bit of bucksies or a bit of prosecco or they can have tea or coffee if they don't want that um and the idea is to make them feel important but more than that is for me to help them relax because they will i want to practice open communication and when you are actually choosing a stylist be any in the hair industry in the beauty industry you've got to feel comfortable and they've got to be comfortable with you so for me giving them a little bit of alcohol (laughs) allows them because i'll just keep talking to them till they talk back to me and i want them to say you know can you move a little bit of hair can you give me a bit more height i want them to walk out that door feeling amazing and i've had a few people literally start to have little tears and they're like oh i'm so lovely and i'm really quite um you know that really warms me because that is my intention and that's why i wanted to create for me it was like a kind of bridal shop environment where you can have a drink and you feel special. I want people to feel special. Yeah, and empowered. Like you say, I like people saying, can we try this photo or can we have a mm. go at that? Or I've seen that photo in your portfolio. Can you do that again? And I really like that. You yes. know, it's don't don't have to be meek and mild and just sort of comply or say whatever you think. I welcome people to get involved. They take ownership. I think that's Absolutely. really important. And that's why, really, I wrote the book and doing the podcast. Give Empower people you know, to take ownership of their wedding and do it how they want. I think that's the thing. I've definitely noticed um, that over the last few years, weddings are getting more individual, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, a decade ago, everybody had the same hair, the same cake, the same dress, <laughs> unfortunately. And within the time that I also got married, which was 16 years ago, everything looked pretty similar. Um, I see so much more variation now. And I go out um, knowing that I'm doing one style one week and a completely different style another week. And that is brilliant for me because as a uh, creative person, and um, it really sort of stirs, it's really sad to say this, but my creative juices in the whole no, it's true. It's environment, true. I get excited. Um, and the weddings that actually I feel that I, I'm particularly good with are the, you know, you've already done a trial for the bride, maybe, maybe the sort of maid of honour. And the other bridesmaids is literally like, I trust you, Jenny, do what you feel suits my hair and goes with the look and then I can get so creative I can get some really amazing styles in yeah. there yeah and the, but that comes from tr- you build up that trust mm. and then people allow you to do your thing and be creative that I think that's absolutely important. you can't I always say comfort comes before creativity so making someone feel at ease yes. is the priority and then you've got that relationship to you know go for it and try different things but you have to feel comfortable and have that that trust fantastic so let's just make sure we're still on track and we're <laughs> we're covering all the things we promised we were going to cover um so let's talk a little bit about wearing your hair versus your hair wearing you because i think sometimes and i and i've spoken to other suppliers about this especially you know makeup artists and, and people that deal with the look on the day mm-hmm. um Obviously, it's a big day. You're going to do something a bit different to what you normally do. How do you balance or do you have any tips for people to kind of look the best version of themselves and try something a bit different and a bit special without feeling different or less confident than you normally would? It's a really interesting question, actually. And I would say, obviously, at the end of the day, it's still got to suit you. Yeah. still has to feel comfortable. Um, but often brides will come to me and they've got very fine hair or short hair and they'll they'll give me a picture and say, well, this is the sort of thing I think I've got to have because um, of my hair. So they've got restrictions. And 
to, to be completely honest with you, since you've got like the sort of the real um, hair extensions, the clipping ones, so they don't damage your hair at all, and you know, discreet padding, you can really more or less have whatever style you like. So um, often people might come to me with that expectation and then we'll start to look through other pictures. If you didn't have to worry about your hair length and you didn't have to worry about the thickness or the texture of your hair, what would you love? What would you really like? If you could, and often people actually don't realize that we can create whatever they would actually want out of their, you know, their dream wedding. Yeah. So with these, because the hair extensions now, they're so fantastic. They've, they've got real hair and then they colour them, you know, obviously they're not yeah. originally that <laughs> colour. They'd be so expensive, but they colour them. They put the highlights through them and stuff. So they really blend in. And if they're put in well, you can't see them. And I always try to use the extensions to such a point that it's enhancing and not taking over the hair. Yeah. Um, some brides will want more hair than others, and that is fine, but for most people, it's a little added extra that, yeah. that's gonna make them feel sort of special. But no, but everyone's just gonna think their hair's been really well teased rather than actually they've got some hair extensions. Yeah, here. it's a way of doing it subtly and enhancing. So yeah, so it's, it's more about being being open about what you want yes. and, and having and having what you want and like you say, just not going, you can go crazy if you want, mm. but um, yeah, just sort of bringing out the best in, the best in you. Probably for, for you as well, being the photographer, these pictures are going to be about for years to come. So, you know, for a, you want something that you're going to feel really beautiful in you don't want a hairstyle that you're going to feel not you in yeah and we'll some we know with us i take sort of up to three hours with my trial it's been absolutely ages <laughs> and with that we'll, we'll find a style we'll find several styles but then we'll chat afterwards so i can really kind of get to know that person and really understand what they're looking for and sometimes i may offer we may start with one style and actually we go to something completely different yeah. like you do when you're choosing a dress or anything else i think that sometimes you have to see in, in essence what doesn't suit you as yeah, to find true. what does suit very you true. so sometimes a trial is literally kind of going round in a whole circle yeah we've, we've started off wanting a, a, a messy braid and we've come out with a sort of low elegant bun or something yeah but we've got there and we found the right style and then they have the confidence in you um to let you create any other styles within the sort of bridal yeah. party yeah so, you obviously as well must you play such a huge part in making people feel confident do you see that you know on the big day or or the difference between the trial and the big day, sort of how once they've got their hair done, how their posture and their confidence changes. I absolutely love that part, Ross. Um, when I see a bride when they're when they've got their hair done and they've got their makeup done and they're in their dress, and I, I've never seen a bad bride. They always I know that sounds cliche, but they just look so beautiful to me. And it's like a little part of mother hair. <laughs> <laughs> God, they look so lovely. Um, you know, you're going on an emotional journey. It's a really weird thing to say, but you're kind of going on an emotional journey with them. No, it's true. You've gone through the whole trial procedure. You've, you've chatted to them about flowers. Often brides will message me, I love flowers in the hair, Ross. I think okay. they look amazing. Um, uh, you know, I remember when I first started hairdressing and flowers were in the hair, and then it was like, don't put flowers in the hair. Um, <laughs> You could be very creative with them. People just give me wildflowers and I place them myself. Oh, I don't fantastic. have the wires or anything like that or on a comb. I put them in myself. Wow. Um, and so I love flowers in the hair. So often brides will message me going, hey, Jen, what flowers shall I use or whatever? So I've built up a, a proper relationship with these people. So then when you actually see the whole the whole journey and the end of the wedding and you see that bride, it's, it's almost sort of sad that you're... <laughs> You're not going to see them again. Um, you know, if I haven't heard from them with a little thank you or something, I will message them and say, hope you had a lovely day. Looking forward to seeing your pictures. Because it's kind of like that. It's, it's kind of just hard to, to leave it there. Yeah, <laughs> I I've, I've, no, I find that, you know, and, and I'm lucky because I get to deliver the photo and then... You get to see them. And then see them. And then if they have an album, I come back again. So they almost can't get rid of me for a long time. But... Um, <laughs> No, it's true. And I see that in guys as well. I did um, a same-sex wedding at the weekend 
Um, and we did an engagement shoot, and the engagement shoot was lovely, and it was nice and chilled, and it was really hot, so they were just in shorts. And obviously at the weekend they are in suits, and the difference in how they stood, and I don't sort of overpose people anyway, that's not my style, but there's certain shots where, you know, look at each other or stand near the wall. Mm. And their whole demeanour was different from where they were just wearing shorts and a T-shirt in their pre-wedding shoot. Um, and again, for, for brides... Um, you know, both genders, whoever you're marrying, once you've got your hair and everything, it does change, does change your demeanour and how, and how you come across and, and how you feel about yourself. So it's kind of that internal, external relationship. If you feel good, you look good. If you look good, you feel good. And it all works together. And that's why finding the right supplies is so important. And that's why I think, you know, the people that do your hair and your makeup and the people that you go to for your outfit, they're going to have such an impact on how you feel about yourself. I agree. I've, I've actually had brides sort of send me nice little thank you saying, you know, you kept me calm, you made me feel special. And that is my job. I know yeah. that sounds like... In a no, I, that's what I feel like as well. I feel in order to be good at my job, that's what I... I don't just need to create nice hair. It's exactly. Got, it's yeah. so much. There's so many more facets. I'm often you know, helping with the dress, giving a little pep talk um, to my bride because I want them to sort of take in the whole day and really kind of experience um, how beautiful they look. And I think when people feel truly beautiful, they radiate an inner confidence and they look... Even, I know it's sad, but they do. They look more beautiful. They're, they're just... Um, you know, it's the true. shoulders are punched. There's nothing as and... attractive as confidence. Absolutely. And it right. sounds a cliche, but it, it is true. You know, you shouldn't, you know, you should always be, you should be proud of your wedding, proud of who you're marrying, you know, however old you are, whatever your faith is. I always say be proud and honest and open about, you know, who you're in love with and who loves you just the way you are. Definitely. So you shouldn't be feeling meek and mild or apologetic. You shouldn't have your head looking, you know, obviously some people are more anxious or more nervous, but... Our job is to build those people up and say, you're incredible. This is your day. You know, hold your head high and smile. Cause if, it's... if I have a really nervous bride, I, I can feel it. I had one, one girl, bless her, and, and she was marrying um, her girlfriend. And she was so nervous. I could literally feel her almost bouncing out of my hands. <laughs> so what I do, I literally put my hands on their shoulders for a minute. And I, I put them on for a, a more than a minute and I hold them quite firmly. And what it does, it's, it's almost like the kind of recce for, for feet, but it, it kind of, it, it grounds you. Yeah. And it's, it's almost, you kind of want someone to do that. And when you've got, you know, lots of people wanting all of you, makeup artists and the hairdresser and the photographer and everything else, you kind of feel in a little tiny way that it's all kind of coming on without you and I think just by going back to that grounding so yeah I kind of hold their shoulders tell them to take a few deep breaths tell them to look in the mirror uh, basically you know look in the mirror look at you you look fantastic because I mean that it's yeah. a genuine compliment oh, it's not a, a, you know I'm not trying to sort of spout something roll out a line that you say at every wedding no but it's it changes genuine. how they because sometimes people get so kind of caught up in the whole morning of the wedding which is something I wish someone had said to me but they get so caught up with us that they're literally not savoring and yeah taking in what's going on and what they look like you know yeah have they looked at themselves in the mirror did they stop for a minute and before they were yeah. dragged off to have their photos done yeah. or have their their lips did they look at themselves did they actually take in and it's such a simple thing but some people don't no. so i'm literally and standing I, in the and mirror. i think suppliers are so quick to um you know they, they might be on a short time frame or you know they've got a lot of bridesmaids hair to do or makeup or you know I've got loads of photos to take but I never go in get my camera right and start shooting you you've got a sort of there's a person you know there that their special day and you've got to chat to them and talk to them and just not delve straight into doing mm -hmm. what you do because then people aren't feeling like a person they're feeling like a, a job or like a commodity aren't they a little bit I agree. you know so it it's so true and, and that has an impact on on confidence as well so surround yourself by suppliers that 
again value you as a person and and listen to you and talk to you and make you feel special because that all has an impact as well because yes. I always think with photos you know you can you can make people sort of sit in a certain way and look in a certain direction and pause and freeze and shoot them from a certain angle and be really bossy and you can get a lovely shot but what you're saying to them subconsciously is this is the only way you're going to look good you know if I do this and do that (laughs) you're going to look good whereas if you know sometimes all I say to someone is just stand there walk along towards me that's all you need to do they're like oh and that is all you need to do you look great but they they need to hear it sometimes, it's, I think. I think some of the old school um, photographers, that if I've worked with them, they're literally like, okay, they need, that door needs shutting, this needs doing. And sometimes they haven't even got their veil on. And I yeah. literally kind of go up and say, hold on a minute, this bride needs to feel beautiful. Don't rush her. This is, and I <laughs> honestly do that. Well, that's um, good. I think that's good to but do that. It's, it's that whole kind of, I, I love the photographers that go in and it's a very, very natural aspect and they're taking pictures. Lots of people go, right, can you just hold the mirror and pretend that you're doing this? And I'm like, but then that's pretending. So you're basically giving them a picture that's a pretend shot of me doing something that I've already done. So, you know, when you just... And I can yeah, understand... Yeah, I get it. It's, it's finding the balance, isn't it? It is. I it, think, it, some of those yeah. are arty shots and they're great. But I think to have so many fake shots, you're kind of looking at a different wedding. Yeah. It, and again, that comes from talking to the couple beforehand. So if the photographer has a good relationship and they know what that couple want, mm. um, it makes it easier for me... The more I see a couple, um, the more, you know, a pre-wedding shoot, you can come in and you know what they want or what they don't want. And again, it's that trusting, like you said, with bridesmaids saying, I trust you, do what you want. A lot of the time when I get to the wedding day, they're like, just move anything you want, do what you want. But I wouldn't automatically do it. I always ask. Yeah. But you've built up that trust. So they know if you're asking them to ju- just move that way because then you're facing the window. Mm. They get it and they understand what you're doing. There's a way of doing things, isn't there? I think that's what what's important. Yes. So sometimes I'm kind of like the... <laughs> I know this sounds really silly, but kind of almost like a bodyguard. They've, they've chosen their photographer and they've not really looked at what they wanted. They've looked based on a price or a recommendation by a venue as yeah. a group thing. And so on the day... They're literally saying to me, Jen, you know, my husband-to-be is Polish and there's a Polish flag outside. I've spoken to the photographer, but he he doesn't want to take a picture. (laughs) So I'm literally, this is an example. So I'm like, actually, this is really special to the bride. Um, The venue has actually put a flag up for them. Could you please take a picture? And, And sometimes some of the old school, which I hate to say that, it's very much like that rather than, um, we had a fantastic kind of shot set up by a complete accident once um, for one of the later weddings. You know, the, um, what's it called when you start later on in the day? Um, twilight wedding. Twilight. Get my words out. I'm glad you said it because my mind was blank when you said it. I was like, don't look at me. I don't know what you're saying. And the photographer, it was so funny. At one point, um, literally, the bridesmaid's doing up the bride's dress. I'll have to show you a picture, Ross, but bridesmaids doing out the bride's dress, bride, bridesmaids doing out the bridesmaids dress. So it was about five deep, okay, almost like the turnip, yeah. pulling out the turnip. Absolutely hilarious. And the photographer at the particular time should have been in there, should have been photographing. What a moment. Yeah. That was like just gold for a photographer. Yeah. And I had to go in and say to him, this is actually a really, you know, the, the bride yeah. would like this photograph because it was... You, you couldn't have made it up. It was it was fantastic. It would be one of those shots that would be in the possible competitions because it was just... Perfect, perfect per, yeah. capture, and, yeah. And they weren't making the most of it. So I love it when we have um, more sort of relaxed um, freestyle photographers because they work so much better with us as well. Ev- yeah. everybody's, everybody wins. I think that. And then when you find a certain number of suppliers, if you ask them for recommendations as well, if you've met a couple of suppliers that you love and get on with, more often than not, the other people they enjoy working with, you're going to enjoy working with as well. So it has mm. a knock-on effect. Brilliant. We've spoken at length quite a bit, so we need to just check we've done everything we've said. We need some tips, don't we, on... On hair. Uh, on hair. Yes. So let's go right back to the basics. <laughs> we've covered everything, but... Um, no, it's been a fantastic 
uh, chatting to you. So, yeah, some tips for keeping your hair healthy. Guys okay. and girls, let's okay. be nice and equal. For everybody, obviously, I would say when you are investing in your wedding and you want to look your best and you're looking after your skin and you're looking after your body, your hair should not be forgotten. You should always invest in a good quality, what I would call a luxury hair care brand. That could be um, something in a salon, okay? So if, if the salon uses the product and you love it, buy the shampoo, buy the conditioner, buy the treatment if you need a treatment for your okay. hair. Um, very, very important. There's um, a particular range that I love and um, I do recommend it to all my clients. And he's, what his difference is, he's a trichologist. So he's not a... Uh, a hair product come you know kind of i've got this big and i'm going to be the new name of the the brand right, okay he um he specializes for the rich and famous but you can buy his products online um for, as, as a trichologist so working with hair and scalp oh, and, okay. and if i have a bride who has particularly t- like dry hair um i will recommend their products and when i go on holiday I will use those particular products. Okay. So if anybody wants any link, they can always message me and I can tell you what those products were. Um, the other thing I would say is if you have your hair coloured, you know, please just spend a bit more money and have your hair coloured for your wedding at the hair salon. The colour that you get is going to be so much more even, um, so much more shiny and, and professional looking. If you're spending all your money on everything else wedding wise, you do not want you know, hair with roots or different colour no. to different ends to the, unless you want that look and then <laughs> that's great. Um, regular trims with the hair, definitely need to look after the hair and, and obviously like drinking lots of water as well. And Yeah, Leanne said that one. It's, it is <laughs> it true though. It works for everything. It's boring, but it's true. <laughs> so brilliant. We've covered lots of ground. So let's just uh, go over a few things. So when choosing your hairstyle or stylist look online look at different suppliers accounts rather than celebrity accounts yes if they've got videos that's good because it's a 3d experience to see your hair from all angles that was a great tip never never even occurred to me actually (laughs) um there's lots of things that don't occur to me but (laughs) that was a particularly good one um have a consultation obviously make sure they listen to you try things out build up that trust um, recommendations or as a bride if you've been a bridesmaid and, and you like them obviously go back to them so I think that's that's a really good piece of advice so there's some tips for choosing your hairstylist um, in terms of choosing your hairstyle itself again it's experimenting but being the best version of you so you know being honest about whether you like your ears or you know certain things that you think suits you or doesn't suit you and yes. make, you know a good a good stylist will change subtle things it's not all or nothing approach something so I think simple that's... it could be they could be looking in front of the mirror and something's not quite right and it could just be a bit of fringe it literally like the fringe goes back and it's like, oh wow you read yeah, the moment and, yeah it's really really simple um i think people kind of over worry about this and this is important um to as i say almost going back to social media but i do think if they're posting their work you're going to get a really good idea of what they're doing on a regular basis. Yeah. So if you were looking for natural hair and you're looking at a bridal hairstylist that is posting very large um, hairstyles um, or very crispy looking, then that's kind of what you're probably yeah, going to get, get. Yeah. Because that's the look that, that she... They're doing more often than not. Yeah. yeah. So I do think that in that way, social media, as long as it's a picture, this is another big hate of mine, Ross, um, where people post a hairstyle picture or a makeup picture and it's not theirs, it says inspiration underneath it. Oh, okay. If you're looking at that social media, you go, oh wow, my God, she's amazing. And you amazing. don't even see the word inspiration. It's not, it's not this hairstyle, I've, it's a really big, big I can tell mind. actually, it's coming, <laughs> coming across the table at me. Let's get you um, another cup of coffee in a minute. I just, <laughs> I just feel that I, I think it's important to post your own work uh, yeah. um, because I do think that if someone's briefly looking through an account and they go, I love this, love this, love this, and it's just something someone's inspired to do, then they might want to do that, but... They might not really? be able to. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Brilliant. And yeah, we have talked about how your hairstyle can have an impact in your confidence. So all those things, how you hold your hair, um, what you wear, um, again make sure at a consultation it's what you want 
Mm -hmm. um, what you want to try and don't be afraid to suggest your own ideas have that conversation don't feel dictated to no. by your stylist even if they're an award-winning celebrity stylist <laughs> you know if it, if it doesn't if it doesn't match your idea of how you want to look on your day yeah um and you will feel more confident once you've had your head and got your clothes on so um if you are someone that's quite anxious surround yourself by suppliers who take a bit of time to listen to you and have a bit more of a quieter softer softer approach mm. um but don't worry because once it's all done you will notice the difference even if you don't think you will you will guys and girls you will feel different once you've got your whole get up on when they're coming in for a trial um often I, I sort of because the room is just closed just for them um they're often able to invite a few people with them and that's great and i'll definitely invite one person but the more people you invite the more opinions you have true, very and true. you have to listen to your own so if someone's done the hairstyle and you've gone they go oh, i love that up style and you truly actually like the down style then listen to yourself so yeah get take someone along with you and i think it's a really good tip for anything you're going to get actually in the wedding industry if you feel that you want someone along with you make sure that they are interested in your opinion as well and not just their idea of what it should be. Yeah. It's incredibly important. I've had some very confused brides going, <laughs> oh my God, I love this hairstyle, but my mum, she really liked that one. You've got to listen to yourself inside because it's you that's getting married and not anybody else. Yeah, top tip. That's really, really good tip. Well done, Jenny. <laughs> so before you go, we always do this. Um, you're happily married. I am you 16 have, years. I don't know why that was a question. You are happily married. It's a statement. I think so. He, You're happily he, married. He might right? not say that. He says I'm a rubbish wife. But as long as I'm a good mother, I'm happy. And a great actually, stylist. Yeah. And if, yeah, you can't, you know, two out of three ain't bad. You're all right. <laughs> and I can't cook. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> he cooks really well though. <laughs> so you're kind of happily married. Um, something you wished you'd been told before your wedding. A little bit of advice. Do you know, there's there's two things. Um, one is, is more of a personal thing. And secondly, it's some, there's another thing that I tend to say to my brides. Okay. So firstly, I wish people would really discuss timings with me at the wedding day. Um, I almost feel this passionate that I want to write a small blog about it. But... There's so much to take in about timings in the morning because your photographer has got one lot of timings and your makeup artist and your hairdresser have got another lot of timings. And the other thing you have to allow for, which lots of people don't, is getting in a dress. Getting in a dress, um, placing the veil um, and things like... For even getting in a suit i mean guys yeah, trying to do Sorry. <laughs> you know ties and co i'm just trying to be and nice cravats. and equal and diverse yeah and cravats. cravats i mean cravats can be absolute <laughs> yeah so it's not just the girls the guys as well it's but the whole dressing okay let's take this out dressing is no, something saying, yeah. that actually can take much longer than you think and the other thing is when um say you're giving a gift to uh, your bridesmaids or your bridesman or whatever you know, the photographer wants to stop for a minute and take pictures. And if you're a hairstylist or a makeup artist, that's still so many minutes out of the... the your allotted time. Yeah, so I think when people try and look out their timings, I, I honestly believe the best thing to do, and especially when I've worked with a, a, like a photographer as well, I will message them. I've messaged the makeup artist or they've messaged me. And we all kind of work out between us physically what real time we've got because oh, the photographers that say i need an hour before with that bride sometimes it's not necessarily going to work that way that whole hour it means that bride's got to really rush for those 15 minutes to get that extra time so i think allowing the flexibility in the morning is key um especially when you're working with the two venues so you're starting in a yeah. hotel packing up all your stuff getting to the venue unpacking everything um, and finding your way around so I think that's one thing and secondly and I feel probably most importantly is when I'm speaking to my brides they're so kind of kind of pulled along with everything that's going on and the hair and the photography and the makeup and the this this and this that they don't stop and I think I touched on that about the looking in the mirror but I tell I literally kind of look at them and I say look really enjoy every moment 
of this wedding, including anything that's not perfect for you. So just a couple of little funnies from my wedding day. And there's lots more I can tell you. But um, one was I actually, my flowers were like a waterfall flower thing. And they just kept falling. (laughs) Just people picking up my flowers. Is that yours? It's like, oh, I'm fed up with this. So I decided that I was going to do the throw, the traditional throw. Okay. And my drunken um, husband's friend, who was already married, decided he was catching it. So all the girls missed it. Or any of my other friends who were in couples... They missed it. Oh, he no. caught flowers. So um, that was, a, but actually, looking back on these flowers and dropping out, it wasn't the end of the world. And actually, it it's, was it's memorable. a memory. Yeah, it is a memory. The other one, which has kind of stuck with me and always allowed me to be more careful when I'm placing a veil, <laughs> is that I went out to the balcony to do the kind of queenie wave. Okay, I wanted <laughs> to be glam. And um, the photographer had run upstairs to do this fantastic aerial shot. And it was very windy the day of my wedding and my veil flew off and it basically, it kind of went, it flew and I thought, right, my stomach's going, I can't let this bother me. And luckily my um, brother-in-law, who looked like a tiny figure from where I was at the balcony, um, (laughs) but he kind of ran along and found it on across the Jeep window. But (laughs) my important thing would be, you know, if things don't go to plan, don't let that ruin your day. Enjoy every moment. Yeah. Savour every moment. All the things that go wrong, you'll probably love years to come. In years to come. And and really enjoy every moment in the day because it goes like a flash. And I say, like, if it's not perfect, it's still things you're going to remember and you're going to laugh about. And actually, the other thing is spend time together with your partner after you're married it is so important we've had that before you're actually yeah. Pillar to post, yeah and it's so important just to have sort of 15 20 minutes or longer if you can um to, to, to spend touch to, yeah, time together time yeah. together time to to enjoy the moment touch that base is done. what i meant not touch time together that sounds <laughs> wrong <laughs> Time to touch base together. Let's just clarify You're inventing that. your own words yeah. in your game. I'm always inventing my own words on this podcast. And, right. and, la- and lastly, sorry, I do like to waffle, but I've got... A- if you want- I don't want to stereotype, but the longest <laughs> episode is when we had the hairstylist in. Now, I don't like to say that's typical of I hairstylist. But- <laughs> so I'm just going to finish. It. What I do say to them, because they're going, oh, God, you know, there's Auntie Phyllis from... Scotland or whatever or whatever they are and I say look you know okay they're sitting around but if you want to dance you dance they'll come and find you if you want to sit and chat at your wedding don't feel that you have to dance but whatever makes you happy it's your wedding day enjoy the moment and I lastly I remember waking up the morning after going I want to do it all again (laughs) oh and that's how you should feel yeah definitely definitely brilliant thank you so much Jenny just quickly and I mean quickly I'm (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my phone battery is going to die at this rate. No, it's been brilliant having you. It's been really <laughs> lovely chatting. Um, tell people how they can contact you because you've given so many tips. I'm sure people will want to oh, yeah. find out more. So <laughs> website, if your website is up and running, otherwise social media. Spell your last name. That always helps. Okay. Well, um, you'll find me. I've actually got um, a brand new website coming okay. at the end of this month. So I'm very excited. Spent a lot of time and energy making sure that my website is really speaking to the brides that that want to, to book me and the sort of hairstyles and, and yep. looks that I go for. Um, it's quite easy. I'm Bridal Hair by Jenny, but I'm spelt with an I and an E. So it's uh-huh. basically on social media, you know, Bridal Hair by Jenny, all in one word, but Jenny, J-E-N-N-I-E. Fab. And and that's like literally on my website and my Facebook. She does lots of Facebook Lives and she's brilliant on her social media. <laughs> so do go and check her out. Um, as ever, I'm Ross Wilshire. You can find me on www.rosswilshirephotography.co.uk. The book, How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, is available on... Jenny's holding it and up. Go on, it... yay! Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was going to hold it up. I'm like, it's a podcast, Jenny. Nobody can see. <laughs> um, the book is available on Amazon Online, Waterstones Online and Barnes & Noble. And if you want a signed copy or you want to email me about anything podcast or wedding related you can email info at rosswalshyphotography.co.uk and I'm on all the usual social media channels but thanks again Jenny thanks for listening everyone and happy wedding planning thanks for having me Ross <laughs>